So we do need to call our meeting to order. Um, we have a roll call. And because of Zoom, I can simply go by our um, wonderful names. So I have Laurel. I have Angela. I have Pamela. I have Trisha. I have Holly, Cindy, Noah, Peter, Danielle, Aaron, Randy, Jennifer. I, A, I, I'm sorry, I messed that up. I apologize. Can you clarify your pronunciation of your name? Lacey? Eileen and Eve Lacey. Pauline, okay. That would be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Joanne, Eileen, Pamela, Kim, and Marsha. Thank you all for being here today. Um, we would like to have our public to invite to be heard if they are there. Hi, I'm Eve Lacey. I'm currently the uh, chairman of the Museum Advisory Council. And I talked to Angela some, and I thought it would be very interesting to uh, listen to your meeting. So thank you for letting me do that. Great, we're happy to have you here. Please let us know if you have any questions and we thank want you. to answer those. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have reviewed the minutes, has everybody else? And if so, we need to approve those um, with any corrections. So initially, do we have any corrections to the minutes? Indeed. Going once. As there being no corrections to the minutes, I would like to have someone move that we approve the minutes. From our wonderful um, April 15th meeting, I was not in attendance. I apologize. My son was getting married. Um, so do we all so approve? move? So move. Thank you, Sydney. I do need a second. I second it. Great. Uh, we had Peter and Laurel at the same time. Very so good. one of you, um, I'm sure. All right. Thank you. All of, um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Raise your hand. All opposed. And our minutes from April 15th passes. Um, are there any other additions besides, I know um, we have a couple from Angela, but are there any additions that we need to add for our agenda today? The only change that I would like to make is to strike 9C. Boston Bridge Elevations, and we'll revisit that next month. Which I will probably forget, but Angela knows that. So thank Got you. It. Okay. Excellent. Um, so we are on to a big, big time. Uh, commission seats, nominating and committee task force uh, for recommendations. Um, we're losing a few people. And so it's time to... Um, elect and nominate those folks. So I'll speak on behalf of the nominating committee since I was a part of the nominating committee. And uh, we would like to put forth uh, the following uh, Olympic slate. And uh, our recommendation is uh, Holly, uh, chairperson, Randy, vice chair, Aaron, secretary, Noah, treasurer. And um, we hope that you'll pass this slate. Would anybody like to make a motion to uh, pass the slate as presented? I'll motion to pass the slate as presented. Second. Are there any objections? All right, prior to that, do we have any discussion? Is there anyone who would like to discuss our nomination? All 
All right, so I do believe we have to um, vote for one officer at a time. So um, the nominations are for Holly Brandish Lane to become chair of the AIP Commission of Longmont, Colorado. So I would like to uh, put that forward. Are there any um, objections or discussion? All right, so then we can do an all in favor. All right, um, all opposed? Holly, in this non-ceremonial moment, I would like to pass you the hammer. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for passing me that hammer, Amy. I am just super excited to see what we're gonna do going forward um, with Art in Public Places. And I will just say that in terms of Amy's participation as chair and over the years, that there will always remain a place in AIPP's toolbox for Amy. Yes, indeed. Can I have a screw and not a hammer? Thank you. <laughs> and I promise I won't ever use this to hit anybody. We'll just use it to build the, build the commission. Very good. Thank you. Angela, do we have any other officers that we need to install? I believe we do have Noah and Randy has something to say. Yeah. Do I get a little ceremony? Yeah. Randy, would you please remain holding on to this screwdriver? Yes. To assist. <laughs> With my Home Depot apron, we will continue <laughs> to build the AIPP commission. <laughs> and I actually did work here. So this is my own apron. Well done. <laughs> well done. It's a very consistent team that we have. <laughs> Would you please continue to measure and keep us <laughs> and building in the right direction? <laughs> I gotta, I've well got to take notes. I've got to do props, you guys. But yes, <clears throat> my good. note You're is. Good one example of the measure of success I hope that we achieve so, moving forward I I I'm funds right now and Noah if you accept this nomination welcome to the committee would you like to try and keep us <laughs> because I'm working real hard on it <laughs> this is on its way to you buddy if if you all want right to. yes I accept uh, this level so Angela, I do believe we have to um, vote on folks individually. Yep. So um, we've already um, voted on and um, accepted Holly, if I am correct. So mm -hmm. we need to vote on our next office, which uh, shoot. is Randy, uh, vice chair, which is Randy. So all in favor of um, having Randy continue as our vice chair, please raise your hand. And if you are not there, you need to put that in the chat, please, if you have an opposition. Okay, all opposed? Awesome, Randy is continuing to be our co-chair. Thank you very, very, very much. All right, so now we have to move to our um, treasurer and secretary. So we're gonna go ahead and move with Noah. Um, Noah has accepted this um, nomination and it's very fearless and difficult and challenging, but he's still here. So I would like to move that someone move that we nominate Noah. I that. <laughs> All in favor of Noah being chair of the Art and Public Places, person, uh -huh. or not chair, of treasurer. treasurer of the Art and Public Places. All opposed? And Noah passes. 
Woo. Hi, Noah. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. I accept this new level of responsibility. And I do believe awesome. Pat, we we have, we kind of plugged Aaron in there at the last minute. Do we need to do anything with Aaron, Angela? So um, Aaron has served as a faithful um, secretary, and she has willing to stay on. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so I we need a nomination real quickly of Aaron being our secretary. I do. Okay, Laurel. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So Laurel has nominated Aaron to continue to be our secretary. All in favor? Aye. All, opposed. All opposed. Excellent. Thank you, Aaron, for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, um, Angela, what do we have next? Thanks to you. And as well to our, our friend, Andrea, who I do not see present at the moment. Um, I hope she pops on. But um, you, Amy, have served diligently, what, two years in the chair position and a full six at least years in two terms and uh, welcomed me with open arms during a transition, handled a hell of a year, I'm sorry, but a hell of a year and kept us together and positive in this Brady Bunch wackadoodle family uh, <laughs> commission that we have going on. So uh, there is something that will be in the mail for you and I wish I could give it to you in person. But um, in the meantime, we, we hope that you will continue to stay and, and uh, guide creative culture and what we're working on and part continue to participate but also enjoy your time off having handed over the hand because without you, we wouldn't be able to build, without the foundation, we wouldn't be able to build what we're working on. So thank you, thank you. You know, I'm a speech teacher, so I won't give a speech, but um, each and every one of you has had a huge impact on me. Danielle, I only known you for a short amount of time, but your kindness and your heart. Um, Trisha, you, you too, you've both been, but this, commission has changed my life. I think I've shared with um, Angela, I came into here thinking I was going to change the whole world and make everybody give money to homeless people. But then I realized that the money we do and the, what we do gives the homeless people. Um, having a beautiful community and having an art as a part of our community is essential. Um, and I hope you will continue to um, implant inclusivity and diversity which were my missions um, into our community. Um, I hope you will continue to elect folks of color and you will look at how Longmont is demographically placed. And now I will shush and thank you for a beautiful time. Um, it's been a quick six years. Holly is gonna kick some butt. That's all I have to say. And I promise I will not say any more. Much love. I'm giving you a standing ovation. I'm giving Come you applause. a round. I'm giving you a round of applause. Thanks, Amy. You still get to finish out this meeting, though. You don't get off that. Yeah, hey, I know. Can I go now? Um. So thank you, everyone, and let's talk about the creative district uh, town hall pilot. All right, let's give it a try, Jennifer. Okay. Um, I know I'm good. I, for some reason, I, I'm i sorry I wasn't on at roll call, but I am here. I'm on my phone tonight, so, but it's working good. Um, so I attended the Creative District Town Hall meeting, which was the first actual in-person meeting that I had gone to in quite a while, and I'm sure uh, many other people too. So it was kind of a unfamiliar process at first but it was very fun it was at the roost in the back room of the roost and and um it was very well facilitated and there were two groups that talked about that kind of brainstormed about what we wanted to do or what was important about the creative district and um the the Two biggest things I would say, well, the biggest points that I took away from it were that 
um, people want to make sure that there's more information about the creative district and that, that it, it just needs to be talked about. People need to be educated. It needs to be promoted. And um, the other thing is that I found, and I do believe this is true from my own experience too, is that people really, really liked living in Longmont and are very happy to be here and love being part of the creative community and have a lot of ideas about how to move out, move create the creative district out of just the actual physical district too. So that was fun. And then the other thing is that, um, the, that there was a real desire to have a bigger performing arts space. And that seemed to be a lot of people were talking about that and um, wanting to have a bigger venue so that we could have more touring acts or entertainment or whatever. So, and, and this was interesting to me because I hadn't really thought about it too much before, but it kind of went into the next thing, which I did attend the museum expansion orientation to. And there is the plans for a bigger auditorium at the museum. That's part of the expansion there. So, um, you know, the big, from what I can tell, the biggest venues that we have here for performing arts are the Dickens and the museum, and both of them are pretty small. And the high school has a big auditorium, but it's always booked up for something very hard to get. May I ask so, something? So Jennifer, um, the symphony and many of our other organizations use Vance Brand a lot. Use what? Vance Brand. The symphony oh. uses Vance Brand every performance. Oh, okay. So I would be aware of that. Um, for the history of that, I would encourage you to contact Kay Lloyd. She's a great friend of mine, but they've been using Vance Brand for a long time. Right, Peter? I can, I can, I can fill you in on that if you want to know a little more about it. Um, Vance Brand was originally jointly operated by the city. That's why it was called Vance Brand Civic Auditorium, but that is no longer the case. It's entirely uh, a school district facility. And um, because of the original agreement, the, um, the symphony is grandfathered in so that they continue to have access to that hall for those dates. But um, it's not, um, is hardly available to anyone else because it's a school district facility and the school right. will, will use all the dates that they need and they need ever more as their programs grow. Um, so it's simply not going to be realistically available for any community groups and other groups beyond the symphony. So Angela, may I call on you so we can move this through quickly? Um, anything that we yeah. should worry about there? Yeah, Kim, so Kim has her hand raised, and I do think that this is a little offline, but um, certainly going back to the creative district um, with the neat. feasibility study coming out, it doesn't surprise me that that was a very activated conversation, and certainly the beginning of many. So, um, Kim, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just want to make it clear that um, in the efforts that we're doing at the museum, we really are just looking at possibilities. Um, right. We're work, working working through a, a fee, uh, not a feasibility study, but a, a master planning process where we're looking at the needs that we have, the needs of, you know, the clearly the um, uh, there was a, a feasibility study that was conducted um, through Johnson Consulting. And that uh, came, to, it was presented to city council, gosh, now this is two months ago or more. Um, and essentially what they said is that they suggested uh, two phases of uh, performing arts. That for phase one would be 1,250 seat facility, and they uh, s even suggested a location which is called Steam, and it's um, it's a development that is supposed to be going down by the uh, the uh, river corridor, if you will. Um, and then the phase two was a 500 seat facility. And so the museum um, kind of under the direction of the city manager, because quite honestly, this is really just being opportunistic because we were already going through a, a master planning process. Um, the city manager asked us to include the, the phase two, the 500 seat 
um, facility in our planning process. There are no conclusions here. We really are just looking at the, the feasibility of it and whether or not it would be possible. Parking is a big issue. Um, so we don't know for sure that we'll even be able to do it because of parking codes. Um, and so I just want that to be clear that, that um, we aren't actually it's not a done deal that we are planning on building um, a performing arts center. We are just investigating the possibilities. So I just wanted that to be clear. And, and also those, those uh, we're supposed to be launching soon a um, uh, engaged Longmont um, survey. And so you would be able to participate in that and give us some feedback, which is essentially what Jennifer um, participated in that it was basically the digital version of it. Um, is going to be on Engage Longmont, and we will have a member event uh, where you can, again, see the boards that Jennifer saw on June the 3rd. So you can kind of check that out and give us some feedback if, if you want to do that. That's from 5 to 7. So you guys are all welcome to join us for that if you want to. So let me know if you have any other questions about that. Well, I certainly don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know everything by any means. I guess the main thing I just wanted to report is that um, in this sort of brainstorming session of the creative district that um, there, that was one thing that people did mention is a performing arts, the possibility that Longmont might have a performing arts center that would be bigger or more available or whatever. So that was true. And, and uh, yes, thank you, Kim, for clarifying all that. Great. Do we have any more feedback on that? Um, I would like to add to what Peter said, unless something has changed in the last five days, um, uh, the grandfathering of the symphony orchestra is over because the symphony can't get any, can't get any dates until August, which makes their season very problematic. Um, so uh, I just... Uh, wanted everyone to, to know that in terms of considering uh, these future plans and their importance because uh, Vance Brand seems to be uh, not even available to the symphony orchestra anymore. Um, Marsha, I would encourage us all to like support that. Um, hey Lloyd is a good friend of mine and I know things are changing there. Um, I don't know how or we can this commission can help but i'm sure you will encourage them and let us know because the symphony is very important to the entire um cultural aspect of longmont so i'm sure you'll yes angela i would just say that um the reason too for the creative district town hall and and certainly more is that these are the opportunities for us to spread news and talk about creativity in Longmont, right? Because it's not just one thing and it's not just one performance, it's all performing arts and all visual arts. So what we can do as a commission is when we see opportunities to go and participate is just try and spread the word because we all know that through those grassroots efforts of trying to get the word out about what is going on and all of the possibilities that we just try and disseminate that. So I will be certain that as all of these different uh, things come online, to send them to you and just encourage you to pass them along. So um, I think for this conversation, that's um, maybe the, the best way forward, unless someone- I, I would encourage you all, if this is a point of interest to you, that you get involved, um, email Marsha, email the symphony board. Um, if it's important to you, then go forward with that. So if it's okay with everyone, I would like to go ahead and move on to um, our budget overview, because it's a big one. Is that okay with everyone? Marsha, did you have anything more? And by um, the way, No, that was it. I, I, I lowered my hand and yes, Please do write to me, and I, I'm a big supporter of the Performing Arts Center. So, um, and congratulations, Marsha, on your big announcement. You oh, thank you. All right, I'm going to share my screen, and without further ado, our new treasurer, Noah, and I 
I've been meeting and talking about ways to disseminate this information. So we're gonna do a big overview first and go from there. So hopefully you all are able to see this. Peter, you're on the top. Can you see it? Yep, okay, great. Go for it, Noah. Uh, thanks. So yeah, uh, as, as treasurer, I'm trying to wrap my head around our entire uh, economic picture here. And um, so the first thing I guess we're going to discuss is how the Art and Public Places um, Commission gets its money to do with it what we do. Um, we typically work off of capital improvement projects. Anything that the city is building, physical infrastructure or construction projects that cost more than $50,000, we get 1% of that uh, estimated construction cost. And then it follows through um, the entire project and lands on whatever the actual number is, we get 1% of that construction cost total. That's goes into the AIPP's budget and we use it for the selection, acquisition, display, maintenance of public art and to encourage the public to engage with that art in one way or another. And um, what is it here? So these are the actual numbers, right? Oops. <laughs> so, um, From what we have here, we have our typical expenses uh, and their associated costs under budget. Um, and then we're, what's the last one, Angela? And then um, this is the full amount that we've, we have budgeted to pay for um, artwork itself, uh, including shock art and any um, I forget what they're called, uh, acquisitions like uh, our good friend Ursa Major. Assets. And, hmm? Assets. Cap Assets, right. Assets. Collection. And I believe, um, yeah, so we see our total down at the bottom is about uh, 206,000 or 207,000 in the last year or so. And if I remember right, our total that we have in the bank is about 1.3 million, which is pretty awesome. And as I understand it, we try to budget that since we already know the construction estimates for major city projects over the next five years or so, we can guess and estimate what our budget is going to be and budget appropriately for all of our expenditures and big projects and things like that. I guess this is me is just um, to explain that this year was my first year in going through the budget process. The budget process for art and public places happens at the same time and so in line with the city process. Um, and there are some CIP projects that are exempt, but for the most part, um, it's anything, you know, any construction a doll or any project over 50,000 with a construction line item there. Um, sometimes it's like 17 bucks and sometimes it's more. So um, obviously in the last um, number of years with the flood, that's how that fund balance got so high. And that's what, as those construction projects are now coming to an end, it's our job to work on that, um, that fund balance. And so that too is why I am here in a full pos full-time position um, and because we have opportunities to, to get these, uh, this fund taken care of and um, back to kind of the, the revenue and the annual budget are more aligned. So just to give you an idea of the current projects that are underway, these are anything that really has some legs, if you will, um, over the past couple of years. And the potential are things that we have talked about, um, like we know that we're gonna have to move gather enough people. Well, as soon as Army Corps of Engineers comes back, that maintenance and repair line item is going to have to increase significantly because that's where it'll fall. So as these projects come in line, um, then they're 
accounted for in the budget appropriately. Um, like the State Highway 66 is something that sustainability and transportation have come to me saying, you can see this, it's gonna be coming down the, the pipeline. So um, as they get underway, then they'll contact us. Um, so that's a, um, in a normal year, that's how that process will happen. Um, does anybody I imagine have, oh, here's our collaborations. I was just gonna point out that obviously these projects uh, span all through the city, right? So parks department, we work with development and planning and we work with external partners like that uh, Boulder County Housing Authority uh, Kaufman project, right? Um, that there's an opportunity to work with them. So sister cities, Boulder County neighborhoods, LDDA, uh, we really work with um, a lot of different partners across. So um, I imagine that there are questions. Oh, and the one thing that we didn't say, Noah, is that our big bad goal is to, um, of course, provide a spreadsheet with um, those big bucket categories like supplies and things broken down into uh, an actual, probably on a quarterly. Um, yeah, I think that would be great if we could present a, uh, a rolling total of what our budget is and what our, you know, expired expenses are, what we can project in the future, et cetera. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. Questions, questions? I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, what we're doing and how the money's coming in and going out. So detailed budget would be nice, definitely. But I, I understand what, what's going on, so. So I would like to congratulate Noah and Angela. This is not an easy thing to go through and Noah being a new timer to this. So um, give Noah a round of applause. Thank you, Noah. You guys are awesome, amazing. Um, and as with all online things, I always lose things. There we go. All right. Um, anything else that we need to go over there? Okay. So it looks like we're moving on to public art project updates. Art on the move 2021. Is that correct, uh, Angela? I guess so, because she just put the PowerPoint up. Hear me when I'm muted. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone who uh, participated virtually in the selection and to give your first round. Uh, every one of you, every commissioner participated online, which I'm going to chalk that up as like, Massive success. 100% is, is awesome. So thank you, because I think that that really got us started off on the right foot. And then, of course, we met uh, digitally to go through the short list. And this is the final list. Um, the first work is Protector. Uh, Protector is 1,700 pounds, and that includes the granite stone and the Colorado marble. Uh, Art and, I'm sorry, rather, Art and On The Move uh, task force will get together to talk to me about locations and some of the installation, deinstallation details. This sucker is going to need a crane, and uh, we have crane use for a couple other things that we have to take out, so we'll work together on that, but uh, beautiful, beautiful piece. The second work that was selected is, I believe it's new work. It's acrylic and aluminum. And what you can't tell from this uh, is I believe that there's some translucent qualities here because this is obviously a model. So um, it's only 45 pounds, but it's acrylic uh, and aluminum and um, is 66 high. So it's pretty, you know, pretty tall. Very interesting, Cala. Um, Under the Lover's Moon is a steel piece that's 12 and a half feet tall. I'm really excited about seeing this piece come in as well. Molly, which is steel and epoxy, 
She's 120 pounds and um, a little larger, taller than life size. So that'll be lots of fun. Wild Ones, which is glazed ceramic steel and cement board. I've actually seen this in person and it is lovely. It is absolutely lovely. And the last selection uh, was music, which is hand forged steel and glass. And sadly, this artist has placed this work um, in Kansas City just a week and a half ago. So we get to move, I know, there, it's just a, it's actually, it's a real bummer. So um, we will be installing our first alternate, which is mid-century mini cacti, um, which is metal, concrete, mosaic, um, glass. And it's a really tall piece. If for some reason I have not received confirmation on this, um, if for some reason this piece is not available, we will go to our second alternate, which is Spirit Set Free. So those conversations are underway. I still have not put the artists here because we are not under contract. Uh, this just finalized last week, but um, I have every reason to think that this is going to be completely copacetic with risk, um, looks good. All the artists have been fairly responsive. So I feel good about moving forward. And then uh, the work, artwork that was selected for 2D display, again, you'll recall that it's the safety and justice uh, center that we are addressing. It's this 16 foot long wall and it's eight, uh, about eight and a half feet high. And the artist was charged to treat the entire area. And the artwork that was selected is this digital photograph um, of a Cameron sunset. So I believe that that's, uh, you know, just North, Northern Colorado. Uh, and the artist, as I understand, will print this to size. So it will be massive. Uh, we're working on the details of how it will mount, but it will eventually hang on that wall. And if for some reason this piece were unable to work out, the Ice Lake Basin was the second choice. So that is those pieces. Does anybody have any questions? Comments? I'm really proud. Those are beautiful pieces. Great job, Commission. Really great job. They are gorgeous pieces. They really are. So the first uh, work that we will deinstall is the blue horse is going to be leaving us here actually next week. Uh, and then the rest of them because of machinery, et cetera, I'm working on uh, the week of June 21st. Um, so you'll get some more information, of course, about that. And if you're interested in coming by and help uh, with some, um, you know, pedestrian traffic. Cindy last time prevented someone from getting totally clocked in the head with a forklift as she was just really wanting to get close. So it's, it's an interesting process. So, um, and on the bottom of your agenda, you saw other dates. I just want you to pencil some things in, look at your calendar and see some dates, but it sounds like as we open up, um, I can use the help. So help her help. Eep. All right. So we are Thanks to Angela um, and all of you. Art on the Move is looking fantastic. I'm so impressed and can't wait to see the pieces. We are swiftly moving on to Shock Art, which is 9B, if I am correct. Yep, so the Shock Art call is out. The online application is up. The locations to drop off is the museum, as well as LDDA during opening hours, and it closes on the 10th. So tell your friends, there's a Facebook push coming. Um, I'm trying to get it in the city line as well. Um, and then of course, again, those, those uh, volunteer opportunities when it comes about for photographing and then getting tables and things set up for our display, so. Excellent, that went quickly. So we are, according to our agenda addendum, uh, skipping the Boston Bridge, and we're moving on to um, our um, 7.30 Center discussion, but we are not there yet. So we're going to go ahead and go on to our creative cultural plan by our friend Holly. Yes. So 
I know I've been coming in front of everyone for about the last six months and just giving you little like tidbits of information about the creative culture plan, um, which was formerly known as our strategic planning, if you remember that. Um, well, I'm, I'm super happy that this week we've made some, what I think is some major pro progress towards getting to this overall goal of developing the creative culture plan. Um, Angela has been meeting with a fellow by the name of Brian Corrigan, who is a creative placemaking expert. So he really, his job is to take creative ideas and move them forward in terms of community. And he really, um, I think he's going to bring to us some really great things if we decide that we want to utilize his expertise. A couple of the things that he is proposing have to do with development of our commission internally to help us to understand what our mission is and what direction we want to go forward. And then he's He's, he's kind of been tasked with helping us to really develop a creative cultural plan citywide. So many of you may have, if you've been around Boulder County for a while, you're probably familiar with the farm to table concept. Does anybody know that farm? It's, it's a kind of a culinary kind of a, a process um, for really making exceptional food and bringing it to the table. Well, when you look at Brian, he has some ideas that could really take us from farm to spaceship. So, I mean, he's got some amazing plans that he really created a proposal and put it together for Angela. She's actually met with him twice, I believe in the last couple of weeks. And Angela, I think you're gonna um, kind of give us a sneak peek what that proposal looks like. Hopefully you can see, this is Brian. And Brian Corgan is a master of uh, creative placemaking. He's an artist, he's an entrepreneur. And uh, he, he's a really fun guy, actually. I've known him for a while and I've worked with him before. And so as we have been investigating, uh, how is it that art in public places can be its best it, the best version of what it is that we are and what we're doing and how do we get to that point? Um, and how do, does this commission gel together, uh, articulate what it is that we think that we're possible and capable of, and then how do we get everyone around us to join in and also looping in our, our city, um, stakeholders, because there's a, a number of them now um, in the budget process. You know, when Noah and I were talking, I tried to point out like uh, principal developers and planners, right, and folks from parks, and just really having them jazzed with us, especially as we come out. So I asked Brian, I was like, well, you know, how is it that we can do this, knowing that we've got to kind of inch our way into uh, meeting together again, but how can we keep it fun? Because that's his, his whole thing. And so he put together a stakeholder and community engagement proposal. That's really three parts for us. The first one is going to be mostly internal. And when I say internal, I mean, um, like the creative district champions, uh, like the folks within the city, certainly Marsha and council, um, and, uh, like Aaron Fosdick and Wayne Tomax, people who are, um, planners and uh, work with the communities, work on community services and invite them to come and investigate with us um, what we think creative culture is. And then we're going to take it to the streets and talk to our community. Um, so with that, he and I talked about um, what that could be and what that could look like. And this is what he has in essence come up with is starting with a stakeholder workshop. It's gonna be a four to five hour workshop um, talking about the strengths and opportunities and guiding future thinking for art in public places. And so we're gonna highlight contemporary placemaking practices, um, but really set us up. So each of us uh, with this and being on this commission uh, is in that leader role that we can go out into the community 
and really talk about uh, development of things that happen in town and how art in public places is a, is a big practice of that. And so this is gonna give us, like we said, the tools that we need to really get there. And this is uh, some images of some of the things that Brian has done in the past. And it is a lot of fun. Um, it's going to really get your creative juices flowing and is gonna help with a lot of the conversations. Uh, so I am working really, really hard to nail down a date because of um, the sun and where it falls, I think that Saturday the 26th uh, of June is what I'm trying to land on. So if you can pencil that date down or put it in your brain um, and I will be sending out a, a note to see um, about participation and hopefully that we can get as many, many, many people as possible to participate. And also that the county um, will allow us to do the things that we need to do and give us the guidance. But it sounds like it's going that way. So very exciting. And then um, this is another example of some of the gamified ways in which Brian um, really taps into uh, the thoughts and feelings and desires of, of community. And then the second piece of it is going to be a community engagement and activation exercise. And uh, chances are we're going to utilize what Noah had uh, mentioned the last meeting of the summer on the streets because there was no May art walk uh, that, that has been translated into a series of Saturday events. And so we, because uh, existing marketing and uh, we'll be working with our partners in getting the, uh, getting the word out about this. And we will all at that point be leaders and have a role in seeing that we are uh, getting the best uh, outcome possible with this opportunity. And then from this, of course, we're gonna data mine the heck out of it with some of the existing work that we've already done in distilling uh, Envision Longmont uh, a lot of the other cultural plans, uh, the arts and entertainment plan from 2011. And we've, Holly, Amy, and I have worked very hard uh, to put that into a single repository. Uh, the museum assessment plan came back and there was some evaluation that happened there. And we're gonna take all of that data and this experience, and that data is going to obviously inform these experiences. And we're gonna take that and then give it to Brian and say, hey, okay, um, from an art and public places led standpoint, knowing where our budget comes from, how our mission is and how we're tapped into all of these different departments and all of these different ways, how can we bring the best art and public places program uh, to Longmont? And an interesting thing too about Brian is uh, he's working with lots of different communities and that farm to spaceship idea uh, especially from an equity standpoint, is sometimes the folks who you want to have around the table aren't able to make it because they don't have time to be able to volunteer. But uh, there are ways and they have skill sets that we can tap into and pay them for their work. How can we do that? And, and this idea of arts and, right? Arts and economic development, arts and visitation to Longmont. How is it that we can make and continue to push art in public places and leverage in the best way so these other entities, these other, uh, the guiding principles of Envision Longmont get a step up utilizing our creative community. And so we're going to be the leaders in seeing how we can make the best program we can to do that. So with all of this, uh, Brian is going to put his recommendation of some of the ways that art in public places um, can be around the table to make sure that everyone who wants to have a seat at the table can be there. And then also, again, that idea of farm to spaceship, that, that our farm, our Longmont farm, is different than Louisville's farm, Louisville's farm, is different than Denver's farm. Um, but we can all do out of this world stuff and make Colorado uh, you know, with our various farms, the place really where um, the creative people come um, to be the best for, for business. Um, and, you know, that means within our, within our communities. Um, so that's that idea of, of farm to spaceship. And um, 
it's it's interesting and it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun so um with that um does anybody have any questions i mean what i'm looking forward here for you from you here uh really is we're talking about basically a retreat for art in public places which uh, hasn't happened in some time we all know that the last strategic plan for art in public places was called vision 2020 and clearly uh you know did its sunset, its pandemic sunset and went away. And so here we are in a new day coming out. And I think um, if we would have done this process pre-pandemic, we probably would have thought about things a lot in a different way where that um, idea of, of interactive um, versus commodity versus a thing um, was kind of the Venn diagram and those two pieces. And now we're coming out and now having this transformational moment that um, the moment that you're living in, the experience that you're having in your place yeah. is the thing that we all value most. And every CEO, if you look at the top five things that they're looking for in any business, it's being a creative thinker. Well, we work with the creative people. So anyways, I will stop talking, but I'm just really jazzed. So does anybody have... Does this mean we get to see each other in person? June. Wow. Oh, wow. So um, Art in Public Places meetings, I should say. Uh, I, I was in the citywide meeting today and council is first. And then based upon, you know, you've got the, you got, bless his heart, uh, Polis is out there saying, take your mask off, take your mask off. But really it has to come from the county and it, and there are citywide requirements. So at this point, uh, advisory boards still have to meet digitally until such time. Uh, but I do think by June 26th, having, um, having a workshop will be vetted and blessed and fine. So I'm working on it. Excellent. You know, I think that the Friends of the Longmont Museum uh, did a program similar to perhaps what this fellow is thinking of doing for us in a uh, more condensed because um, the Friends of the Longmont Museum spent many more hours and, um, and really it was a terrific facilitation. And I, I'm excited. I was telling Jennifer who heads up the Friends um, that it's like a milestone uh, in terms of of what we went through and what we feel we can accomplish now. So I endorse it and I, I think we'll be excited about it. My opinion. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Angela, again, we'd like to thank you for all your hard work on that. That's amazing. Uh, it feels like it's been a long time coming, um, but that's just sometimes how things happen. And it actually ends up being kind of a good time. So, Stop it. so from my understanding, um, it looks like we can move on. Um, we still don't have the civic center discussion. Are there more, is there more input? Kim. Yeah, so I just wanted to add to the conversation that, um, you know, there is a lot of uh, kind of strategic planning conversations that have been happening around the museum and around art and public places and around the friends of the museum. And um, I don't know exactly when this might be the most opportune moment, but certainly I think that it has become clearer and clearer that it makes a lot of sense for um, the AIPP Commission and the Friends of the Longmont Museum and the advisory board for the museum to come together. And, you know, we can kind of um, rally our energy for arts and culture in Longmont um, and also just get to understand what each other is doing and, and where our different uh, uh, focus is. Um, and so like Laurel is on both boards. So she gets a, a sense of the friends and AIPP. And I think that um, one of the goals that I have had since I started my job now almost four years ago is for there to be more integration between the three boards of the museum. And I think we're finally getting to a place that it's, it's starting to make sense about where those integration points um, make sense. 
So look forward to an invitation for all of us to get together. And I think it might even be in person. That would be awesome. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. (laughs) All right. Great. That's amazing. So um, Civic Center, would you, would y'all like to talk about that? Hi, Sharice. Therese! Hi, Laurel! Hello! Hi! Nice to see you all this evening. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, for me to come and speak to you a little bit about the Civic Center. Uh, For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sharice Montgomery, and I'm a project manager for the City of Longmont in the Facilities Maintenance Department. And I was actually brought on board to help with the bomb projects uh, that were passed in 2018 um, that include the Civic Center. Um, Then our efforts will move to safety and justice. And then we'll kind of make the rounds with all of the city facilities and making sure that they're structurally sound and will last um, the next 20 to 50 years uh, that Longmont will be fully operational and structurally sound. So um, Angela's gonna share, I ha- I put together a little presentation um, just to help give you a little background about the Civic Center and art in public places. So thank you so much, Angela, for, for being my slide guru. Um, we can obviously go to the next slide. Um, For some of you who might not know, the Civic Center um, was actually built in the mid 70s and it was five separate buildings. Oh, we can go back, yep. So you can see the administration building is really the city manager's office today. There was an existing judicial and um, engineering building, which that's where city council chambers is right now. Um, and then we have our ETS department ahead uh, on top of that. And we have our existing police building, which is now our community service building. And our finance building is still our finance building. And the library is still the library. But you can see that really with the original construction, they were five separate buildings. So the mall area was enclosed in the late um, 80s, early 90s. And that's where the skylights came in and the um, art that currently exists today is hung off that skylight. However, you know, the original uh, intent of that piece of art um, wasn't in the original plans um, because they were five separate buildings. People thought they, you know, they they hadn't um, put a roof over it to make it an enclosed mall area. It was an exterior um, building base. So let's move to the next slide. So um, we had some structural concerns of the building and this kind of just shows the timeline of repairs that have happened in the building. Um, The original investigation started in 2015 and here we are today, um, six years later and we're still working within the complex. Um, water has not been our friend. Um, and so with all the amount of freeze thaw cycles we get, um, that has really done some damage to the structure itself. But I'm here really to, um, show you a little bit about what the mall looks like now. So if we can go to the next slide. So, um, if you haven't, um, had the ability to go to the Civic Center recently, Um, we kind of have the before and the after picture. Um, Most of the displays that um, art was um, displayed in, including programming uh, through the rec center and community services has now been removed. Um, We did have a big structural repair that came right down the middle of the civic center um, pre-COVID. And now we have brand new carpet that has gone in. Um, One of the displays that will stay, however, next slide, is our sister city showcase. Um, Obviously the goose goose is in its temporary position as we were 
um, redoing some of the carpet. So that's not his forever home. Um, he will, he has been moved back. Um, but you can kind of see some of the displays that um, currently exist, really honing in on, on the Northern Arapaho um, communities. And really it, this is our showcase for, for the, that art um, to be displayed. So next slide, please. So one of the things I know, the colorful poetry of the Middle Ages, which are the flags um, that existed in the skylight area, we were looking at possibly there being an, some other locations that we could utilize for new art. Um, and one of the locations that you can see in this picture here um, really does create a 360 degree visibility. Um, and the beauty is it's slab on grade. So I don't have any structural um, concerns about the weight of any art that might get placed. Um, and it's a fairly substantial area. It is um, approximately six feet by 16 feet. Um, it can be seen quite, um, quite nicely from the entrance into council chambers, as well as the parking garage. And then you get a top view as you're in the mall area and there are stairs actually on both sides of this location. So um, when I got a chance to meet with Angela, we said like, hey, this would be a really great area. And as you can see from the picture, it definitely needs some TLC and it would be great to be able to mm. have some um, art in that location. One of the other areas that we talked about, next slide please, is to really have something be more outside. Um, the Civic Center has kind of gone through a transformation and we have new guardrails, we have new lights, um, we have new um, surfaces that are outside. However, really due to the structural integrity of the building, we can't put anything on the post-tension slab that exists today. So what we would really hope to do is create some kind of area in the uh, northeast uh, corner um, of the intersection of Kimbark and Third. It is also an outdoor area and the building kind of blocks one quadrant. Um, but the beauty is um, then people that are on the patio area of the Civic Center could see the art at a completely different vantage point than those people that are walking along the sidewalks. Mm. Um, it is an outdoor area. Um, we don't have any structural concerns at that location. And it also has electricity that is running to that location. So um, at this point, I'm just really here to answer any questions that you might have. I'm hoping that we've I have presented some food for thought on maybe some other locations that we can go with art. Um, this fall, we do anticipate replacing the skylight that does exist. It has reached its life um, expectancy. And um, our hope is that um, it, it's hard enough to get skylights down and, and not damage uh, normal walls. Um, and I really, <laughs> um, I don't want to do any damage art <laughs> along the way. So I will uh, open it up. You, you can go to the next slide, really, because it's just thanking they all for letting me have the opportunity to come and speak with you tonight. But um, I'm here to answer as many questions as I can or take notes um, so I can get a response back and have Angela filter that back through. I think one of the things that we have talked about, and I thought that there might be some questions about, um, certainly for our uh, colorful poetry in the middle pages, is that the timeline for Skylight is that has to happen in the fall. Is that, that's correct. So those will have to come down one way or the other. And uh, one of the things that we were waiting and had tabled in our conversation 
here in Arden Court Places is that um, whether to bring the conservator in in advance or being um, efficient in that the work will have to come down in considering the conservator at that time. Uh, the other piece is Holly and I have worked on um, getting some employee feedback as well, um, questions as well as some community feedback. Um, and Sharice had mentioned uh, just dot matrix posters for folks that will be going over there. So um, yeah, I think that just coming up with a plan uh, for conservation, um, if we can agree as, as a group, um, then again, if, if going in and having the conservator take a look at it in situ now is the way we want to go, I, under, I understand that too. Um, and then the next piece of it is because we do have this 150th um, celebration that we're talking about from uh, the Longmont standpoint, launching a project this year, obviously it wouldn't um, get completed this year because it could be a very large project, but launching that and getting a task force together um, would be helpful, especially because that Northern Arapaho um, sister cities as I understand, is going to be solidified later this fall. Um, yeah, so if there's questions for Sharice or if we're interested in starting a two-person task force and then we can have a larger committee um, as well, so. How about a task force? Who would like to like dig into this? Cindy, thank you, and Danielle. Oh, all right. Well, we have to like debate. So who was like, eh, maybe not. Go ahead, Jennifer, you could do it. I would love to see Danielle too. Danielle, you think? That's fine, oh. That's fine. we'll just uh, make sure that we're recording our meetings and, and uh, Jennifer, you, I think we had started because you were investigating them early on. I was, and I also am fiber artist, right. so. I, I don't know. I mean, it's not the kind of work that I do, but I know fibers at least. <laughs> Great. I will leave that to Angela to uh, uh, figure things out. Um, Cherise, I cannot thank you enough for being here tonight. You kind of opened our eyes to things that we uh, weren't aware of. So do we have any other questions for Cherise? Oh. Really? I actually may oh. not have caught this, but when will at least the two spaces that you alluded to, the indoor art space and the outdoor art space, when will those be ready to be occupied with art? Currently they are available. We are still working within the Civic Center complex and the library kind of gets included in that area. But our hope is that um, this summer or late summer, early fall, all of our work will be completed with doing the structural rehabilitation. And um, as our COVID uh, restrictions are being eased, I am seeing more and more people that are utilizing the Civic Center. Um, and I would love to actually see something go in sooner. <laughs> rather than later, because to me, it's like a blank canvas and it needs something, so. I, I, that's why I asked, I totally <laughs> agree with you. Great question, anybody else? Wow, so I did wanna give you, um, I got an email from Marsha Martin, her laptop died. And so she didn't mean to leave us. So um, I went to my, I never check my Gmail during these meetings, but for some reason I did. And she wrote, my laptop, my laptop died. I'm trying to work on it. It's the city's problem. No, she didn't say that. But. <laughs> All right, so just so you know, Martian did not leave us in vain. Um, okay, great. Um, I'm going to our next, and I of course lost it. Don't, don't. Stand by me, stand by me. Well, thank you all so much. I am going to bow out and, and please let me know if there's anything more that you need. Thank you, Sharice. 
Thank you. Thanks, Thank Therese. you so tonight. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay. And of course that did happen. And now I have to go back up here. Okay. So our next item, we're getting close, y'all. We're doing really, really well at a 7-Eleven. Um, budget, creative plan, Holly. And Holly already, uh, administrative report. Angela, look where we're at. Hello. So the big thing that happened, and I'm going to try, I'm going to lose you for a minute visual-wise, but I'll get you back. Uh, is that we have received information from um, our an artist that we had worked with in 2019 when I first arrived, um, DeWitt Godfrey, who installed the Collier Park piece. And I'm going to pull it up just for recollection in case you haven't been over there. So there it is. And this basically mm -hmm. was mid installation. So this was a uh, fall of 2019 that cottonwood tree is no longer there. Um, and so we have not had not finalized this project because the artist was uh, still in debt to some subcontractors here in Longmont. And I'm happy to report that all debts have been paid and the documentation has been approved by the city attorney as sufficient to accept this project. So without further ado, I would love to get this off of the list and accept the piece. Again, um, we've had a dedication. Um, everything is underway and it looks good. It, I do need to move some sprinklers, but that has nothing to do with the artist. So um, that's the big bad report thing. So if, if anyone would like to motion to accept that work, we'll Wrap motion. Oh. All right. So, can I have a mo can I have a motion, please? Yes. All right. I motion that since all debts have been paid to the city on so so called piece of art, that we move to accept the installation into the AIPP collection. Thank you, Ron, Randy, and I second. A second. So, Holly, we have a second. All right. Awesome. Can we say an all in favor? All in favor. Awesome. All I think this might be my last vote of all time. All opposed? <laughs> the motion passes. Congratulations. Um, this has been a project that I have been working on for like five years. So congratulate everybody. Yay. Thank you, Angela. <clears throat> there you are. And then the only other thing to report is that I am moving forward with Timber and Wayne Tomac. Uh, you'll recall that Wayne Tomac is the facilitator for uh, neighborhood improvement projects as well as sustainable neighborhood improvement projects. And the Kitely neighborhood had come forward with their basketball court. Uh, there is a subcontractor or a contractor who does this kind of work and has been unresponsive to Timber. So uh, the new business is really that uh, Timber would like to work with Art in Public Places to facilitate that project this year. Um, financially, I think uh, it looks like it should all go through the Neighborhood Improvement Project uh, grant process. And all that financially will be asked of Art in Public Places is likely the sealant and then facilitation of getting the artist and uh, the volunteers and all of that, hit, you know, bringing our cavalry, if you will. Uh, so I'm really excited. I think that that's going to be a great project and also one that we can can and then have. So if other neighborhoods uh, or other areas in the city um, are interested in the similar kind of project that we have the what, we know how much it costs, we know uh, you know, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve, but I think that it's it's worthwhile. So um, those are the two big administrator report pieces that I have, unless anybody has questions. Um, again, other stuff is like the, you know, the shock art and art on the move are keeping me pretty busy, so. Jennifer. I just, I was wondering, Angela, 
I was down at Ninth and Alpine today, and I was wondering when the murals are going to be restored and sealed. Is that on for the summer, or is it a is it the climate that has to be done at certain temperatures? Or I I just want to know what's going on with that. Yep, May has been awful. So uh, the artist anticipated that this month would we would have action, but um, I, I'm actually not sad that it's been raining and cool. Uh, but <laughs> I actually think that this would be wonderful forever, but, um, yeah, no, so that, that is the reason. So we're going to probably be looking to kneel down a June date. And at that time, um, you'll recall, we'll have to close down the bike path and hopefully have some volunteers just standing by to help for, uh, pedestrian, you know, um, bit. So, yep. That'll okay. Sure. Thank you. So can volunteers that live like two blocks away, can they come yeah. like that? They, I might, I might think a, some, a friend of mine who lives really close to there might think about it. Awesome. All right. Y'all, we've done really well because um, Angela and I thought we were going to be here till nine tonight. Um, so uh, thank you, Angela. And I apologize for my dogs. Uh, do we have new business tonight that we need to take care of? I guess that was the call your park thing, but we're all we're all done with that new business. Anybody else have some new business they want to bring up? How about um, here we go? Uh, commissioners' reports or comments? And uh, Randy, Angela. Uh, now that we seem to have two more spaces for Art on the Move. So here we are again, right? Art on the Move. Um, we're limited. Oh, well, good point. Yes, we could put in infrastructure to, I have a crying dog too. Um, we could put in infrastructure for temporary artwork at the corner of the Civic Center, if that is what the commission would like to do. We could do a permanent piece there. Um, I do think that indoors is probably more uh, appropriate for us uh, sister cities or indoor piece. But yes, certainly on the outdoor, 100% that we can go forward with that. And I can pour a pad, I can call concrete and pour a pad tomorrow if we want. Would you, would you guys like a little subcommittee? I think we could just make up our mind of how big we want it and i've got concrete guy on standby i can call it in we would just have to pick another or use one of the next pieces in the that was chosen yep and make sure that it's not too tall to run into that tree but that's my problem i can i'll go out there with the measuring stick no problem well, yep. what is the next step that What's the next piece that we voted for? So the the Art on the Move uh, subcommittee that will choose locations meets next week. I needed to, I needed to know um, at least a verbal confirmation of what work was going to be installed. Um, so we need to figure, we need to meet next week and figure out those locations. Um, again, but I, I have plenty of time. I've got a month. I've got plenty of time to pour a new pad. No problem. I do think that is subcommittee worthy though. I'm really do because you guys got pads and stuff and I'm kind of over your pads. <laughs> well, we have an art in the move task force. Yeah. Art in the move task force. Maybe you should think about that. Pamela, uh, I just saw your light go on. Do you have, a, do you have comments or questions? No, I just said, yes, that's a really good idea. Okay, so I'll get our on the move task force together early next week so we can get that underway and just uh, think about that as a potential location as you consider these these works. Um, and once I get that final final confirmation of participation from the last artist, then I will send visuals out for you as well as the map. Okay. Awesome. Good thinking. So do we have any more new business? 
Wow, Angela and I were literally thinking we were going to be here till like eight fifteen. So <laughs> wait, wait, I have one more thing. Um, for the hundred and fifty year, is there a task force for the hundred and fifty year project or Longmont oh. thingy? No, we have the colorful poetry, but uh. No, we do not. Would anybody be interested in serving on the 150 year task force this year? Sure. I will. Pam, mm -hmm. Randy, and Pam, Pam, and Pam. Pam, you know you're here twice, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? So, Pam and Randy, great. Why don't you guys, y'all folks, get together and think about something? Anybody else? I'm, I'm sure Angela would be excited to be a part of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, sorry, everyone. I'm done. Now, any more task force or anything that we need to form before I leave and don't have to be on them? <laughs> Angela, that was funny. All right, so commissioner's report is where we're at. Before I give my speech again. Comments. Yes, Peter. Commissioner's comments. Uh, is that what he had? Yeah, comments. Commissioner's yes. comments. Th those were me. That I did two commissioner comments. No, you were in new business. Commissioner comment. Any more comments? Deepest appreciation and thanks to Amy. Yes. That's thanks. my comment. Um, these are folks that I probably would have not got to know. That was my little speech. Um, I knew of Cindy, I knew of all of you in other um, lifetimes. And um, I'm not leaving. I'm just going backwards a little bit. Um, I hope to participate in your events. Um, and I thank you all. You've made me grow as a human being. Um, I regret that we had to do this under a pandemic because I had a lot of big ideas, but um, wearing a mask and not being able to be together made that hard. I am very confident that Holly is going to be amazing. And, um, you know, it's all my doing that Hall, um, Angela is here. So thank you for your blessing. I'm, I know I have not been the most kosher, um, the most dignified, the most um, realistic chair. I had um, a meeting with Paul and told him, uh, Paul, uh, those of you who know Paul Meese, and he said, you know what? They knew that before you came, they wouldn't have let you be in if they hadn't because you've never put, um, you've never put on a face, so. Thank you, and um, I'm proud to have been a part of this commission, and I'm proud to be your friends. Y'all are my friends. So thank you. Any other commissioner comments for the evening? All right. Well, I'm very proudly to say that my last meeting, sorry, 725 on um, May 20th, we adjourn. Thank you.